They call this the Green Hill. And at the summit sits a legendary theatre. Well, for anyone who loves Wagner as I do, this place is Stratford-upon-Avon, Mecca, Graceland, all rolled into one. Bayreuth, the home of the Bayreuth Festival Theatre. And I'm here for the first time in my life. It's what I've always dreamed of doing. Oh, look, ticket office. Every summer, they stage a festival here, dedicated to the music of Richard Wagner. I've received an invitation to go behind closed doors as the new season takes shape. It's fabulous. You don't often get a chance to see this. There's so much to look at, but only one place to start, and that's with the music. Wow, this is amazing. Lucky beggars. As always, the centerpiece of this year's festival is the Ring Cycle. Four monumental music dramas inspired by ancient myth. This is a rehearsal for the second of them. Look. Valkyrie, second act. Just the second act. God, there it all is, every note of it. Shouldn't really be looking, and he's got his notes here. Ah, it's cheating. Whoops, put that down. Quick, be in trouble. And uh, there are the Valkyries, look. Guten Tag, Valkyren. <laughs> a Valkyrie, if you've not had the pleasure of meeting one before, is a female goddess, a daughter of Wotan, the king of the gods. Five of them, we're three missing, Clusper and Hilda. Because you stand waiting for a Valkyrie for hours, and then they all come at once. must be the most famous Wagner tune of them all. But music is only one element of his genius. He was also an extraordinary dramatist. And his revolutionary work demanded the creation of a unique theatre to stage it in. to see this. I, I, I never imagined in all my life that I'd see a rehearsal of the uh, beginning of Act Three of Two Valkyrie. The score sounds so funny on the piano. It almost sounds like silent film music at times when it's racing along and then out comes that famous theme. Wagner a lifetime to create this temple to his art. It's still driven today by the ideals which inspired him, dedicated to excellence in performance and production. Don't know which opera this is from. Some mud made of rubber. 
and real grass. It's just amazing the number of personnel that must be involved just in the stitching of costumes and let alone the designing and the finishing and the fitting. It's an incredible thing. Oh, look, more here. That could be Loga, the god of fire. I don't know, someone like that. Excellent. Welche, welche, welche Tier? Ein Ocelot. Ein Ocelot, my goodness me. Yeah. But it wasn't killed for the production. No. It was already. Not at all. It's a very old one. <laughs> very old one. <laughs> Hi, I'm Stephen. Hi. You're playing a Valkyrie, you're playing a Wurstweiser. Oh, it's quite a costume. It's fantastic. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I wish I were a Valkyrie sometimes. Fabric a go go. These boxes, even the boxes of Wagnerian. Pacifier women, ring 2006 Siegfried. It's just a. It's a treasure house, isn't it? Stoff. Goodbye, Stoff Lager. I'm not sure if I was allowed in. You might be wondering why I'm so excited about being here. I must have been 11 or 12 when I first heard Wagner's music on my father's gramophone. It was the overture to Tannhäuser, one of his earlier operas, and it did something most extraordinary to me. I've always loved music, I've always been hopeless at performing it, couldn't really play an instrument, certainly can't sing, but it's made me do things inside, it's released forces within me, and no music has done it like Wagner's. To experience the music I love in the composer's own theater is something I've dreamed of doing for as long as I can remember. But it's no secret that my passion was also shared by him. And like me, he felt the magnetic pull of Bayreuth. I'm Jewish and lost relatives in the Holocaust. So before I take my seat in the festival house, I need to feel sure I'm doing the right thing. To understand why this place exerts such a powerful hold on all of us who've loved Wagner's music, you need to understand what it meant to the composer himself. It's a million miles away from the type of theater where his career began. Everything Wagner detested about opera, a place to show off, to be seen, a place to whisper and talk and stare across at your rivals and neighbours and social betters and social inferiors and all the snobbery and nonsense that still pertains in so much of opera, of course. 
Wagner hated all that. <laughs> but it's funny. You've got to admit it's funny. Good gracious. By his early 30s, Wagner had worked in a string of places like this. He had also written six operas, including Tannhäuser, the piece which first ignited my passion for the music. But his radical ideas weren't confined to the stage. In 1848, he was working as musical director in Dresden's royal court. This was a year of political revolutions in Europe, and Wagner soon joined the struggle. He sided with the left-wing nationalists who wanted to replace the princely German states with a unified nation. When the uprising failed, he found himself a wanted man with a price on his head. He fled here, to Switzerland, where he lived for the next 12 years and plotted the theatrical revolution which would change the face of opera forever. So do you think this particular landscape has a connection with Wagner's music? Oh, yes. It was the first time he'd seen the mountains at all in his life when he came to Switzerland in 1849 after the revolution after he was thrown out and had to escape and he writes very enthusiastically about the scenery I mean he didn't want his music or his opera to be artificial he keeps saying naturlich he very often described the stage directions which have to do with the mountains mountains clouds cliffs rocks and so on yes. they're all described and then of course they have the association with the swiss landscape so it seems to be clear that switzerland was more than just a, a little place to wait while uh, while the storm died down oh yes i think switzerland played a great role in his life Before he fled Germany, Wagner's career had started to take off. Now, age 36, he was homeless and virtually destitute. But he wasn't defeated. In Switzerland, he began to dream of creating something new and extraordinary. He believed the greatest art form that mankind ever had was Greek tragedy. Not because of the nature of Greece or the nature of tragedy, but because Greek tragedy encompassed all the arts of acting, verse, music, dance, costume, spectacle, chorus. But more than that, it involved the whole community, all people. It wasn't a snobbish, elitist thing. It was a, a ceremony, a, a, a celebration. But more than that, it was a religious ceremony. And on top of that, too, its subject matter was myth. And Wagner believed very passionately that the very nature of myth was universal because it was outside time. It wasn't about the bourgeois or the aristocracy. It wasn't stories of love affairs in history. It was, it was, it was outside time, almost like science fiction, but science fiction set in the past, if you like. It could speak to everybody, whatever their condition. So his revolutionary idea was to have what he called the total work of art, the gesamt Kunstwerk. Um, and that, therefore, the word opera was pointless. He hated grand opera with its, um, its flounces and its absurd trills and ornaments. Obviously, if it's greatest, like Mozart, he, he venerated it. But he wanted to cleanse the theatre and cleanse art of all this nonsense and to get back to the elementals and to make a theatre for the people, which was music and dance and drama and everything. And he was going to be the one to create it and he was going to be responsible for all aspects of it. And he put this together in an essay he wrote here in Switzerland, um, uh, which was about uh, the future work of art. Uh, and it was a future work of art that he was to make into a present work of art, the Wagnerian music drama. To bring to life his utopian ideas, Wagner conceived an opera about the mythical dragon-slaying hero, Siegfried. Over time, his ambitions grew. Instead of one opera, he would write four, 
an epic exploration of the conflict between our appetite for power and our hunger for love. It begins with the struggle for control of a magical ring, which grants its owner unimaginable power, but only if they swear to renounce love. It would take more than 20 years for Wagner to realize his vision, with the first performances of the Ring Cycle at his purpose-built theater in Bayreuth.